All right, welcome back everyone. We are cruising through the authentication section of this playlist. So far we have done sign in with email, sign in with Google, sign in with Apple, and now we're gonna jump into anonymous authentication. This is a really cool feature from Firebase, and essentially it's authenticating a user, like actually signing them in to the Firebase authentication, but without requiring any sort of email or password or SSO. If either we don't want to require users to sign in, but we still want to get their user ID, or if maybe our app has uh, like a free version where users are not making an account, and then maybe after they complete onboarding or down the line after they use the app for a while, they have the option to create an account. In that situation, you would start them as an anonymous authenticated user and then later you would actually sign them into the official SSO or whatever they're using. Working with anonymous accounts definitely adds an extra layer into your app. So I would say if you don't need it, maybe don't do it. But the, but the big benefit of this is that you can basically authenticate these users as soon as the app launches because the user doesn't have to type in an email or a password. They don't have to click a button. So you can kind of just do this behind the scenes. And once you authenticate them, you can get a user ID. And if you've ever built an application before, getting that user ID early in your app lifecycle often solves a lot of problems that you might face. The major thing to take into account here, which we are gonna talk about in this video, is that if a user is authenticated in Firebase, we can't authenticate them a second time. So instead, if a user is authenticated anonymously and then they want to authenticate with Apple or Google or email, we don't just authenticate them again, we actually connect their previous authentication to the new SSO. And so that's called linking the credential, which is what we're gonna actually do in this video. So this way you can actually support both anonymous accounts and signing in with whatever method you choose. All right, welcome back everybody. And congrats to those of you who are still here because the last video was quite difficult. Connecting sign in with Apple for an asynchronous Swift concurrency flow required us to write some pretty difficult code, but luckily the code in this video is significantly easier and faster. I would guess that in the future, Apple's going to make that easier for us, but who knows? Anyway, in this video, we're gonna do sign in anonymously. So let's go to the Firebase authentication, add a new provider, and we're going to do anonymous. Let's first talk about what anonymous is. So basically you generally use anonymous if either your app is never going to have users sign in. If you're never going to require some sort of SSO or sign in with email, but you still want to get them authenticated. So you get a unique user ID for them. Then you, then you use the anonymous approach. If you use the anonymous approach though, as you're going to see later in this video, if the user later is going to sign in with one of these providers, you need to link that sign in to the anonymous account. So basically if we have an anonymous account, we can't, we don't want to also have them sign in with Google and create a Google authenticated account. We want to link their Google authentication to the anonymous account. So this is something that's pretty important to understand. So basically in your app, if you're requiring every user to sign in and as soon as they open the app, they get hit with the sign in screen, then start signing with Google, start signing in with email password. Perfect. If you have an app where maybe they can use the app before they actually sign in. So maybe the user can use the app and then it's optional if they want to make an account and sign in, then you would start with anonymous and later connect them when they sign in to the anonymous account. In the third world, if you never want to have them sign in, but you do still want a unique ID for the user, you can use the anonymous account. This will get everyone at least authenticated into the Firebase platform. And when we write security rules later, which we'll talk about in an upcoming video, one of the rules that we most commonly write is only users that are authenticated can access our database, right? So. If we don't have anyone authenticated, then anyone would have to be able to access our database. But if we do the anonymous, then we can still at least authenticate users, 
even if they're not actually signing in somewhere. So in this video, we're going to do this anonymous authentication, and then we're going to link some other sign-ins to the anonymous authentic and go from there. Let's configure this, enable, save. While we're here, let's go to the docs. So let's do anonymous authentication. Import the Firebase SDK. We're already connected to Firebase. Configure it. Auth.auth.signin anonymously. How easy is that? That is so incredibly simple. That's, I love it. I love it so much. All right. Auth.auth.signin .auth anonymously. So let's jump back into our app and get that going. Let's start by opening up the canvas so we can see what our view looks like. All right. And what I'm going to do is is let's do it above the sign in with email. The very first thing, let's copy and paste this. And we're not going to go to another view here. So let's just delete that function for now. And the text is going to say sign in anonymously. Now we're creating a button that says sign in anonymously. And let's make it orange. I guess Firebase is orange. In your actual app, if you are signing a user in anonymously, most of the time, if not all of the time, that happens behind the scene. The user is not actually clicking a button to sign in anonymously. That's pretty dumb. You could just do that in the background, sign them in, get their user ID, and then let them continue using the app. We are doing this just because it's a tutorial and we want to be explicit in what we do so we can sign in differently on this app for now. All right, sign in anonymously. We're going to have to create a function here. So let's copy this function and paste it here. So sign in anonymous. And we don't need any sort of helper. Let's delete that. And we need a function in our auth manager for this. So let's jump to our auth manager, auth manager. And if I look at the mini map, we have a section for sign in with email. We have a section for sign in with SSO. Let's create another section down here. So mark sign in anonymous. It'll be an extension of authentication manager and we'll open the brackets. All right. We saw down here, the function that we need is auth the auth that sign in anonymously. Seems simple enough. So let's, let's just copy this sign in function here. Auth the auth dot sign in anonymously. Perfect. It's asynchronous. It throws and returns an auth data result. It's literally what we have already. We don't need to pass in a credential and we'll just call this sign in anonymous. And that literally is the whole function. How much easier was that than the last one? Let's go back to our application, auth view, auth the auth authentication manager dot share dot sign in anonymous. All right. And the result is unused. Again, we don't need that result. So let's mark it as a at discardable result. Come back here and back in our view. Well, let's see. So the same thing we do with the Google. Let's just copy that, paste it here. Try wait view model that sign in anonymous. If it's successful, we will dismiss the sign in view. Oh, sorry guys. This is quite a bug. The, we should do a button, not a navigation link. We needed the navigation link because the email goes to another screen. This does not. So it's a button. Let's put our label in the button. Let's put the task in the button action. Let's delete the nav link. Let's run the app. Let's log out of whatever we're logged into. And now we have signed anonymous. Click it. And we are signed in. Just like that. Literally nothing happened. You'll notice that nothing printed out though to the console. So we don't have an auth provider. So even though we are authenticated, our function from a previous video, we have a function that runs get providers. So it gets the auth provider for the current user. And you'll notice, and it printed out in a blank array. So all of the other auth providers gave us, gave us password, Google, Apple. This is now blank. So even though they're authenticated, there is no auth provider. Question then becomes, well, how do we know if they're signed in anonymously or not? Well, that user value, which we are all, always com converting to an auth data result model, actually has a whether or not a Boolean, whether or not it's anonymous inside that user. So we'll say, let's, so let's add that field into our auth data result. So we'll say let is anonymous. 
of type bool. And we'll set self.isAnonymous equal to user.isAnonymous. So telling us if, it's an, if they're anonymous or not. And now we have this in our app and we can use this when we need to. This is going to be important because later in our app flow, if the user tries to sign in with Google somewhere, if they're already signed in anonymously, we need to link their Google account to the anonymous account. We do not want to authenticate them in a separate Google. That would actually fail. You can't add another auth if the user currently is already off, basically. Before we do that, let's check out our authentication console here. Go back to users. And we can see that this user is anonymous. So we literally have no idea who this user is, but we have an awesome user ID that is unique, that is stable, that we could then use in our app. So it was that simple. We're in our app now and we can log out. One thing that's incredibly important to know about the anonymous behavior is that since it is anonymous, there's no way to log back into that account, right? Like what would you, how would you do that? There's no email, there's no password, there's no SSO. So if the same user logs out and then goes to log in anonymously again, it's actually going to generate a brand new anonymous account, a separate anonymous account for that user. And so that's why if a user is logged into your app anonymously and you want it so that they can actually save and log out, maybe log in on a second device or just log out and log back in on the same device, they're going to need to link some other SSO any other SSO, email, Apple, Google, to the anonymous account. If you have an app where you're using the anonymous and there is no login, you could basically just hide the logout button so that they can never log out and create a second account. All right, so now we have, we're signed in anonymously, but now I want to actually link maybe my Apple, my Google, my email to this anonymous account. So let's go through that logic. Let's jump back to the Google Docs real quick. Is anonymous, we did that already. Convert anonymous user to a permanent account. So this looks pretty similar to what we've seen already. We basically need to get a token and convert it to a credential. And then the only difference is with that credential, we need to link rather than sign it. So again, back to our auth manager, we have functions for signed in with a credential. And now we want to link with a credential. So coming down here, I'm going to create these functions. Let's say func, let's say link. We're going to do email first. So we're going to link. We're going to need to create that credential. So we'll say credential equals, it's an email auth provider coming from the Firebase SDK dot credential with email and password. So we're going to need to include the email of type string and the password of type string. Let's pass that in. And then we're going to take that credential and link them. So we're going to say, so in order to link first, we need to get the actual user that's currently authenticated. So we'll say guard let user equals auth, auth user, current user, else throw, let's just do a URL, bad URL. This must be asynchronous and throws. If we get that user, we're going to call user.link. We're looking for the asynchronous one. We're looking for the asynchronous one with the credential. So here we're passing the credential and, and this will be the auth data results equals try await. So this line of code is literally the same thing as this line of code, right? Except this one's sign in, this one's link. And then the same thing we do here, we're just going to return back the auth data result model from our back to the application. All right, I'm moving kind of fast because this is not the most fun stuff. We're also going to want to link their Apple account and their Google account. So kind of the same logic, and I'm just going to copy and paste this, and we're going to say link Apple. The difference is this is time for Apple. When we did the sign in with Apple, we needed an OAuth provider dot credential with the tokens and the nonce, and we got that from a sign in with Apple result. So it's going to be the same thing here. I'm going to come down here, paste this in, and let's just add in our tokens, sign with Apple result, paste that here. So what this means is even when we're linking Apple, we're going to have to go through the whole sign in with Apple flow, and then we can link it to our Firebase account. 
Now this code and this code are the same in both of these functions. So let's be good developers and do not repeat yourself. So let's create another private func here and let's call this link credential and paste this in here. And so let's just in, let's just inject a credential with the auth credential. And here we're just going to return, try await link credential. And we'll pass in the credential and copy that line of code, paste it up here. And now these functions are looking sweet. What do we do wrong here? This link credential has to be asynchronous function that throws and returns. We're going to do one more for linking Google. So let's just copy it, link Google. And let's go back up to our sign in with Google. I'm going to copy that credential, paste it here. I'm going to copy the sign in with Google result model, paste it here. And I think we're good to go. Awesome. Let's go back to our authentication view and discuss what we want to do in our app now. So if a user gets to these settings and they're anonymous, let's show some extra buttons here so that they can link some other account. So we're going to come back to our, let's see, where are we? No, oh, sorry. We can delete this on Apple helper from the last video because we have the helper here. Let's go to our settings view. And let's see if the user is anonymous, let's also load the user when we go to the settings view. So we'll say, let auth user of type, where's our auth user type? Auth data result model. And we'll set it equal to nil. Let's create a function called load auth user. And and we're going to say self.auth user, auth user equals try authentication manager shared dot get authenticated user. All right. So now we're going to have the auth user here and back down on our view. Here we have if they're, if they're signing with the email, put this section here. Let's say if view model dot auth user dot is anonymous. So if they're signing in with an anonymous account, put another section on the screen. And this is going to yell at us because this is optional. And this is actually not a Boolean. It's a optional Boolean. So we, there's two ways to solve this in Swift. One is we can do a, if this is equal to true, meaning, and the difference between is equal to true versus just how it was before is if it's a Boolean, it's true or false. If it is equal to true, that takes into account the nil value because a nil value is not equal to true. And that's why the compiler is not yelling at us now. Another way to do this is we could do say, we could say if let user equals view model dot user auth user comma user dot is anonymous. Both of these are very great ways to safely unwrap. I'm going to just keep the first one because it seems a little bit, I don't know, shorter, maybe. All right, let's create another section just like we did with this email section. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it down here. And let's just say link, let's say anonymous section. And let's create a button, a bunch of buttons here. The first button is going to say a link Google account. And the second button is going to say a link Apple account. Third one's going to say link email account. All right. The header here is going to say, so if they're anonymous and they're linking their account, let's just call this account. Create account section. All right. Obviously these functions we need to change in a second. So let's just put this on the screen quick and see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and run it. And on a peer, we actually want to load the view model dot load off user. Just click run. All right. So now we have these buttons here. The reason it says create account, even though they technically already have a created account in our authentication platform is that if you're using anonymous, again, generally the anonymous authentication was done behind the scenes and the user doesn't really know that they actually have an anonymous account created. So to the user, when they link an account, it's really just creating an account. 
And these buttons in your app would actually be our regular sign-in buttons, right? It would say sign in with Google, sign in with Apple. I would never have this UI, but I don't want to spend that time to recreate all of that UI. So if they click one of those buttons, let's actually link their account to, let's actually link the accounts. All right. So let's come down here, link Google accounts. We're going to need a function in the view model. Let's create a func link Google account. All right. This will be asynchronous and throws. And what we're going to do is call the try await authentication manager shared dot link Google account. And we need these tokens. Now these are the same tokens we got from when we did the sign in with Google. So if I look at my authentication view for the sign in with Google, we had a helper we called sign in, and then we called sign in with Google. Here, I'm going to call create a helper, sign in, and then pass in those tokens. Then helper is going to do all that hard work for us. The same thing, we're going to create a link Apple account, sign in Apple helper. Helper dot sign in Apple flow. And then here we're going to call link Apple pass in those tokens. Lastly, we're going to do a link email account. And we actually are not going to create the UI for the email because I don't want to deal with creating the text field in a whole nother screen. So let's just say let email equals and let's do hello one, two, three at gmail.com and let password equals the password that I had from earlier, which is just this. And I'm going to call link email with email and password. All right. Now the result of these links is a new auth data result user. So we let's say let auth data result equals. Right. And we're actually going to use this result because we want to put it on the screen. Cause once the user is not, is not anonymous, we want to hide the rest of those buttons. Now in your app, if you want to have them link multiple accounts, you can do that and do that UI. But what we're going to do is once they're not anonymous, we're going to hide these extra buttons. So when we get these values, we're just going to set self dot auth user equal to that auth data result. And we can actually one line this, put this here and we're good to go. Same thing on this one and this one. All right, let's come down to our code, our anonymous section, link Google. We're going to call view model dot link Google account, view model dot link Apple account, view model dot link email account, email link. Let's say Apple linked. Let's call this Google linked. Let's run it and see what happens. I think we're going to get an error, but then we're going to fix the error, of course. So I'm coming up here and I'm going to try to link my Google account. So when I click it, the Google SDK kicks off. I'm going to go through that whole process. After that, we're going to get that token back and we're going to try to link the account. And you're going to see an error pop through. This credential is already associated with a different account. Kind of wanted to show you guys this on purpose. Basically, as I was saying before, the same user cannot authenticate twice. And we don't want them to because we want distinct users in our app. So what Firebase is telling us right now is that we have this anonymous account that we're signed into. And we're trying to link that Google account that I already have an authentication for. So we can't link these accounts because they're already two separate accounts. We can only link accounts that are not yet authenticated into our platform. So what I'm going to do is actually delete my Google authentication here. I'm going to delete the account. When you do that, it is permanently deleted. You'll never get that user ID. So be careful when you're deleting accounts. I usually would not do it for actual users unless they're trying to delete their account. And now let's run through the process one more time. I'm going to link my Google account. And this time, hopefully it works. These buttons are hidden, which means that our user is probably not anonymous anymore. I'm going to reload this. But before I do, notice that right now, T3 is anonymous, right? And it's just anonymous here. Once I link their account, no longer anonymous, we can see 
the identifier and we can see the provider that they're connected to. And we can continue to connect other accounts. So we hid these buttons. I'm gonna come back to my view real quick. And actually, I'm not gonna hide the buttons. Let's just always have the anonymous section for a second. And I am gonna link my email, which is also already in use because I already have these. So let's just delete the, I think it's this one. And I'll also delete my Apple authentication. And let's come back into our app. Let's link email. Looks like it's successful. Let's link my Apple account. This looks good so far. Apple linked. All right. So everything is linked now. I'm just going to hide this section again. But I'm also going to go back to my console and check this out, guys. We now have three providers for this same account, which is awesome. So if this user ever tries to come in, sign in with any of these methods, they're always going to return back that same account. And that's a great way for having users to also like secure their account, right? Because if you forget your Google password, you can sign in with Apple and so on and so forth. All right. Again, I'm going to log out. I'm going to build my app one more time just to make sure everything is working. Let's see. Let's see. I get my auth screen. Let's sign it anonymously. And let's reload. And again, I am connected to, I can't sign in with any of these. Let's, let's do an email that I haven't done yet. So let's go back and change that email. Where's that email? Let's change another email at gmail.com. And we can keep that password. Let's build our app one. I'm going to link my email and this is gone. So that means it must have worked. And Let's click run one more time. Let's reload the console. Now I can see that this account has an email. It's no longer anonymous. And when I run my app now, I can see the printout for our provider is now email. It's not nothing, but it's email. Because it's email, I have these email functions back up here. Very cool stuff, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. You now know how to sign in a user anonymously. I would highly recommend doing this for your apps if you do not have any sort of SSO or sign-in process, because at least you get them authenticated, you get a unique ID, and then you can always have them SSO later. All right, thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking. I think we have one or two more videos to wrap up authentication, and then we're gonna move on to some even more fun stuff.